If we can open our Bibles and we go to the book of Genesis, we go to the book of Genesis, chapter 18. I'm going to read from verse 9. Genesis chapter 18 from verse 9. I want to speak a little bit, maybe for the next 20 minutes, on this small subject, is anything too hard for the Lord? Sometimes our situations in life, they really take us to the limits. Our situations in life, they really appear before us that uh, there is no rescue or there is no remedy. But I want to encourage you, my brother, I want to encourage you, my sister, to say God himself came down to our father of faith, Abraham, and asked him this question and say, is anything too hard for the Lord? And we know very well that with God, all things are possible. It may be very impossible to you. When you look at your situation, it may look very difficult. It may look like nobody is going to help you. But I want to encourage you this evening to say, with God, all things are possible. I was listening a little bit to that song that we know Brother Branham loved a lot, which says, only believe all things are possible. I've been listening to it while I was working, and I've been listening to it while I was studying. And uh, I just want to encourage you that you should not get to a point where you think that the situation is no remedy. There is no situation that God cannot handle. There is no situation that God cannot deal with. Even when it comes to sin, he only said, don't speak evil and blasphemy the Holy Ghost. You know, some people think that when other people that are not really in the faith they have problems and they, will, they will go through difficult situations and they do different things that are evil, they think that some of those things that they've done are not redeemable. There is no scripture that tells us that uh, they are not redeemable. Most of the things, except as for the blasphemy, which we know is speaking against the Holy Spirit. So I want you to take encouragement from the words that we are going to share. I'll read from verse 9 of Genesis chapter 18. This is the story when Abraham received visitors. When visitors came to his home, and they happened to have been appearing as angels, but one of them was more than an angel. And the story goes like this. From verse 9, And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? So the angels had come to the house of Abraham, and Abraham has received the angels, received the visitors. After he received the visitors, he asked his wife to prepare food for his visitors. When the wife is preparing food for, his, for the visitors, this conversation takes place. In fact, when they were now eating, that is where this conversation takes place. And, uh, and he said, behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife will, shall have a son. And, it, and Sarah had it in the tent door, which was behind it. Now Sarah... Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So you see, the situation that we find here is that Sarah is not a, is not a, a young lady. She, she, she does not have any hope now to have children. And the situation is that she has ceased to have the cycle of women. That condition has gone it's no longer the condition that is around her life. And the Lord, who was one of those angels there, said, I am going to visit you. And remember, these are people that, is, that have been married for a long time and they did not have a child. Their situation was really like, it was really coming to a situation where it was impossible. You don't have children when you have gone past menopause. You don't have children when you have gone past the time of really having the, the cycle of life. But we find here God speaking against that condition. 
And I want to say the condition that you have, the condition that we have in our homes, the conditions that are around us, that are hanging over us, the conditions that give us tears, those conditions, God is more than able to take them away and to reverse them. So he goes on to say here, now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken and in, the, in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah loved within herself, saying, after I am once old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord also, being also old also. So Sarah looked at her condition, Sarah looked at the surroundings, Sarah looked at all the things that I could do, speak to her, and she did not see any, any of those things being able to tell you any hope. You know, sometimes you go to the hospital and the doctors tell you that actually this condition is going to improve. And that helps your faith to begin to believe. You go to the doctor, they tell you, no, don't worry, we can help you with this kind of way and it can help. But there comes a time when you go to the doctors and the doctors say, this is beyond our science. The doctors say, this is beyond what we can understand. The doctors say, this is beyond what we know. And maybe they give it a name. But I want to encourage you and say, when the cycle of what we know with science have come to its end, then you look up to God because with God, all things are possible. So let me read on here and we'll get to the point that I have taken this. And the Lord said unto Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? It was a reasonable cause for Sarah to think about it in that way and the people or laugh whichever way we want to look at it. Remember, we have spoken before about what you think in your heart is what God hears. And we see that Sarah did not laugh that could be heard. So she didn't think that people could know what she's doing in the end. But God who looks at the heart, who hears what the heart is speaking, was able to see that Sarah is laughing in her heart. And then that laugh which Sarah was doing in her heart led the angel, this angel who was a little bit different from the other angels, to take note and to come and to speak something about it. And I am praying to God this evening that may that same God who came down in the form of an angel in the days of Abraham, may that same God come down into your situation, into my situation, into our situation as a group of people, into our situation as families, into our situations as homes, into our situations as believers. May that same angel come and look at our condition and say, is anything too hard? So he says here, verse 14, which is what I like, is anything too hard for the Lord? So this God asks now, is anything too hard for the Lord? And we know the answer that no, there is nothing that is too hard for the Lord. And at the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Now you see Sarah trying to say, I did not laugh. Many times we find ourselves in situations where we have written off, where we are even writing ourselves off, where we are allowing other people to write us off, where we are almost writing our situation off because you can imagine a woman that is getting close to 100 years old and a woman that has seized, long seized, we know that it ends around 40 something years thereabout, or even some, this, this place even comes early, it, it ends around mid 30s, it's beginning, beginning to be a problem. But the God that you serve, the God that we serve, our Lord Jesus Christ, we know that He has already said. When he came to Abraham, Abraham was happy. And this is that point when he came to Abraham. And he said, is anything too hard for the Lord? I want you to look at your situation, whatever situation it is. Maybe it's a situation of your future. You don't know what is going to happen. You have finished your studies and you are wondering, what's going to happen? Where am I going to get a job? I want you to know that your situation is not even difficult. Your situation is not even hard. But even if it's hard, even if it has come to a point where it is now really looking like beyond repair, when it's looking like beyond repair, that is when you now must look up to God. That is when you must really say, Lord, all things are possible with thee. Like the woman who had a blood issue for 12 years, 
When these physicians had eaten and taken their money and the bank account had all been withdrawn to pay all the medical bills, where she did not get benefit from the medicine. She then came to a point where she realized that there must be a superpower. There must be a power above other powers. And when she heard about Jesus and how Jesus was healing all men of sicknesses, and she took notice of that and she decided to take a journey. And she went to where Jesus was preaching and she squeezed herself amongst the brothers and among the sisters until she simply said in her heart, if I can only touch the hem of this garment. She looked in the scriptures and she saw where Elisha was also doing the same. When the woman, the Shunammite woman came and said, yes, this is the son that you gave. And behold, the son you, you gave us is now dead. What did Elisha do? He took part of his clothing and he said, you take my stuff and you go and put my stuff upon that child. He even sent us to do that. And we know there is a secret hidden power even around us. Uh, the shadows of, of a man that is completely filled with the Holy Ghost. When Peter was walking and the people bring his shadow, their, their, their sick people, their brothers and sisters and relatives, the Bible says they will bring them. And even when the shadow of Peter will just be passing by, their conditions will be changed. And I want to encourage you, my brother, whatever situation you are going through, whatever situation that you are faced with, whatever situation that, you, that is really causing you grief, I want you to know that there is a God who is above every condition. There is a God who is above every situation. There is a God, and that God is the God you serve. The name of that God is called the Lord Jesus Christ. You can believe on him and put all your cards on him and believe and trust in him and say, Lord, you said when you met Abraham, is anything too hard? You asked him that question because you knew there is nothing that is impossible with you. William Branham, our prophet in this day, he came to a point where he was wondering when people were laughing at him and he was seeing these visions and people were talking about him in the negative. And he came to a point where he says, I am done with people. I don't want to listen to people anymore. I want to hear from the one that is sending these visions. And he went into a cave and he told his wife that don't look for me. If I don't come back, don't worry about me. And he went into that cave and he began to seek God. And the angel came. And when the angel came to the prophet, he told him, all things are possible. Only believe. With God, all things are possible. We are going to be praying to that God tonight. I don't want us to limit God. Whatever situation it is, don't limit God. You know, we should not limit God. To say God is going to only be the God of healing people that have got the headaches. We, we say God is only going to be healing people that have got things that medical doctors can get involved. No, let us believe beyond what medical doctors can do, beyond what medical doctors can say. Let us believe in this one God who has promised us that he will never fail us. He said it in his word and he will stand with his word. He said in the word when he was preaching one day, he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. And he's the one that promised that if we ask anything in the name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father will do it. So I am encouraging you, my brother, whatever situation, I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how difficult it has been. I have got situations that are also hard. I have been crying. I have been crying about them. And I continue to cry. But one thing I know is that there is a God in heaven who answers prayer. There is a God in heaven who said to my father Abraham, is anything too hard? When Sarah was almost getting to nine to eight years, to, to 100 years old, and she had this long season to have a man of women. And God said, is anything too hard? Now, I want to read a few scriptures. And then we will come to the time of prayer. I don't want to preach for long. I believe you believe these things. I'm only encouraging you so that the devil, when the devil is attacking you, I know that the devil is not going to be resting. He is, he is on the run. He wants to attack. We also have to attack back. Amen. So let us go to, uh, let us open the, the book of Luke chapter 1. They are talking about is anything too hard for the Lord? Chapter 1. I will read. I will not read the whole, but you can read it from verse 26 if you like. I just want to rush maybe to verse 35 or thereabouts. 
Amen. Let's, let's read from verse 34. It says, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? We are talking about the God of impossibilities. We are talking about the God that said, Is anything too hard for the Lord? We are talking about the God that said, I am the Lord who healeth all thy diseases. We are talking about the God that says, Behold, I stand and you knock on the door. We are talking about the God that said, Come, even if your sins are as red as scarlet. We are not talking about a God that is a half of God. We are talking about the fullness of Him. So, Mary, seeing the situation that the angel is saying, I have not known a man. How can I be pregnant? Maybe you, you have got a situation that is probably not talking about how can I be pregnant. You have got a situation that you are looking at it and you are wondering, how is this going to end? How is this going to change? How is this going to disappear? How is this going to be taken away? When is this going to come to an end? You are faced with that situation, my sister. You are wondering in your mind. You try to sleep, that situation comes back to you. You try to take a nap, that situation comes back to you. You try to speak to your loved ones, that situation comes back to you. I'm here to encourage you to say there is a God in heaven. Our God is more than able. So here it goes on the story and then he says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, uh, she has also conceived a son in her old age. So, these situations they are getting, these situations that have gone to the end, to the limits, Zachariah and Elizabeth, it is going to the limit. But God stepped in. God came down and said, is anything too hard for the Lord? The woman that touched Jesus, she had gone to the limits. The situation was no longer bearable. The situation was no longer comfortable. The situation was no longer sustainable. The situation was no longer... You cannot explain it. But when she came to the Jesus meeting and she touched the hem, the hem of his garment and she said in her heart, so I want you to learn that you now should pray not only when we pray now, you should be praying always in your heart and be speaking to that situation and be speaking to that condition and be speaking to that, to that challenge that is before you. Whatever situation, whatever challenge, whatever condition, whatever problem, whatever trouble, whatever, whatever demon is bothering you, whatever demon has put the sickness upon you, whatever demon that is trying to trouble you, I'm challenging it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm saying, is anything too hard for the Lord? We want to go into prayer and we want to believe that God answers prayer. So he says here in verse 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. So with God, you are going to come out of that broken uh, situation where you are broke, where you have nothing in your pocket. With God, remember, he is the God that anointed Elisha and told Elisha to speak to that woman. You, you know, that woman that came to Elisha and said, oh, my husband he died. And then when he died, he left a lot of debt. And what did Elisha say? He did not say, oh, there's nothing I can do. He said, okay, you go and borrow more drums and then you fill those drums with water. In fact, there was a bit of oil and he said, you feel, you when you're filling with, with that oil and it kept filling. It was impossible to that woman. She did not understand how it's going to happen. With the men, there's a lot of things that are impossible. Your friends will tell you that uh, your situation, forget about it. Your friends will try to despise you. Your friends will try to come and speak those things that make you feel so, so low. But I want you to know, hold on to this faith and belief and trust in God. 
Let's read this scripture here in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 32. Is anything too hard for the Lord, my brother? Is anything too hard for the Lord, my sister? Let us agree that there is nothing too hard for him. Yes, it is hard for me. Remember, Abraham was not a wishy-washy man. As we saw in the other subject we are taking on Sundays. That we are not talking of situations here because this man is not a believer, so these things come to him more. We are talking of situations that fall on believers. Remember the disciples, as they were in the boat, and the boat began to have all that roller coaster. And they were wondering what's going on. They were crying. Yeah, someone was crying. Someone was crying. Someone was trying to pray. And they found that it was just that it was not going to help. And they went and said, Lord, please care is not that I will perish. And when he came from sleep, he said, peace be still. And the disciples, what did they say? They said, what kind of a man is this? That even the nature, the winds and the storms, they obey him. Let the, the storms of your life obey the voice of Jesus Christ. Let the storms of your life obey the power of the Holy Ghost that is in your life. Let the storms that are around us, let those storms come to a point where they listen to that inner voice that is speaking in your heart. Let the storms of life come to hear and listen to your voice when you say, peace be still. So Jeremiah is praying. Let us hear how he prays. And then we see what he says also. And then we will come to a time where we go to the prayer time. If you also remember the children of Israel, the three Hebrew children in Daniel chapter 3, they said to the king, they said to the king, oh king, we know that our God is able to deliver us. You know, they had gone to the end. It was like the, the, the maximum limit that they could be pressed on. You couldn't have forced them to go to any limit. So maybe, I don't know what situation you are going through. I also have got situations I'm going through, which I also, maybe sometimes they push me to the limit. But I want you to be encouraged by these words. Our God is able. Our God is able. Our God is more than able. He has not forgotten you. He has not forsaken you. He has not even gone into slumber. He is watching. He is looking. And I want you to believe, as we will be praying after we just finish this exhortation, Let's read this prayer from Jeremiah. And you can also go to the message, the presence of God and recognize uh, paragraph 127 and 128, 640618. I'm not going to read that quote, but it talks about it as well. Just going to read this paragraph from Jeremiah and we go to the time of prayer. From verse 16. Says, now when I had delivered the evidence of the purchase unto Barak, the son of Neria, I prayed unto the Lord, saying, I want us to listen to this prayer. And when we go into the time of prayer, let us learn a few things from this prayer. It says, Oh Lord God. Behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power, and is stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Jeremiah recognizes that this God is praying to, this God is talking to, this God is addressing, is the one that made the universe. Have you ever thought about that? The God that you'll be praying to, the God that you pray to all the time, is the God that made the universe. Is the God that made all things. Is the God that said, let there be. 
Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompensed the iniquity of the fathers unto the bosom of their children after them. A great, a mighty God, a Lord of hosts is his name. Great in counsel and mighty in work, for thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men, to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings, which has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, even unto this day, and in Israel, and among other men, and has made thee a name as at this day, and has brought forth thy people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and with wonders, and with a strong hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with great terror, and has given them this land, which thou didst swear to their fathers, and to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. And they came in and possessed it, but they obeyed not thy voice, neither walked in thy law. They have done nothing of all that thou commandest them to do. Therefore thou hast caused all this evil to come upon them. Behold, the mounds, they are come unto the city to take it, and the city is given into, um, into the hand of the Chaldeans that fight against it because of the sword and of the famine and of the pestilence. And what thou hast spoken is come to pass, and behold, thou seest it. And thou hast said unto me, O Lord, by thee, O Lord God, by thee the field for money, and take witnesses for the city is given unto the end of the Chaldean. So that's the prayer. Daniel is addressing the Lord. Then came the word of the Lord unto, sorry, sorry, I said Daniel, Jeremiah. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. That is the God that you worship. That is our God. That is our Savior. That is our Redeemer. That is the one that came down and took our pain, took our tears and sorrows and carried them to the cross of Calvary. That God, we are reading about him. We want him to come out of history. We want him to come out of history. We have situations around us. You have situations around you. I want you to know we'll be praying to the God of the universe that created all things. There is nothing too hard with him. If he could make those people that didn't have legs to have legs and walk the land, the people that were lame. If he could make people that did not have eyes to have eyes and then see. If he could make people that could not hear to hear. If he could make people that could not speak to speak, he is still the same God. And that God is here. That God is where you are. That God is in you with the form of the Holy Spirit. Let us believe him. Let us yield ourselves to him. And let us speak to him and mean what we speak to. Let this not be a normal prayer meeting where we just want to have time and then say one hour is gone. Let this be a day that will say, Lord, you promised in your word if we ask anything, you will ask. And he says here in his word, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. And he asks the same question. Jeremiah 32, verse 27 asks the same question and he, he now he is addressing himself and he says is there anything too hard for me that is the God that you I don't know how it will happen I don't know what needs to take place I don't know when but one thing I know now is that that God is still the same he has not changed. If he has done it for others, he will do it for you. He will do it for me. If it has not been done, 
I will continue to ask you and I will call you to speak to him. As long as it's still a burden, please help me, Lord, that I do not laugh and giggle in my heart. But even if I fail in my unbelief and I giggle and I laugh and I think, ah, the situation is nothing that can be done. Please, Lord, help my unbelief. Please, Lord, help my unbelief. Let us just pray. Lord, we thank you. I've said what I could say and I read what I could read. I believe you have not changed. I believe you are not going to change. Because in the beginning you saw darkness and when you saw darkness you did not like it. You didn't like darkness at all. And you said, let there be light. And Lord, when you came to this world, you saw people that were troubled with sicknesses, you did not like it. You didn't like it at all. You didn't want to stay close to it. And you set them free. You healed them of all their manner of sicknesses. And Lord, when you saw conditions, people that had been rejected by society, maniac of Gadara who was breaking chains and running away from home when you met him Lord you did not like his condition Father they are conditions around us if we don't like them we know that you don't like them also and I'm asking that Lord as we go into prayer forgive our shortcomings count not our sins Count not our mistakes. Count not our failures. But look at the blood. Look at the cross, my Lord. What you did for us. And hear our humble cry. Lord, I pray that you help us as we go into this prayer time. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.